Hello and welcome back to Distributions. And as always, many, many thanks to all the nice people that support this channel on Steady or PayPal. This is part 5 and today I want to talk about so-called regular distributions. However, before we do this, I first want to show you a useful characterization for distributions. Of course, you already know, a distribution is a linear map T from the space of test functions to the real or complex numbers. And you also know it has to be continuous in the sense as we defined it in the last video. We use sequences for this, but there are also a lot of other equivalent characterizations for it. Hence we can write it in the following way. T is a distribution if and only if for all compact sets in Rn there exists a natural number m which could be zero and there exists a positive constant c, such that for all test functions phi, we have that if the support of phi lies in the compact set k, then this implies that the value t of phi is bounded from above. Namely, we have the constant c times the sum over all multi-indices with degree less or equal than the constant m. And then we look at all the derivatives of phi in the supremum norm. Please note, this means that whenever you can write down such an estimate, you immediately have the continuity and therefore you have a distribution t. Since at first it looks complicated, we really should write down a proof for it. So let's start with this direction. So when we have the estimate, what can we say about continuity? In order to show this, let's choose test functions phi k and phi, such that we have our d convergence for the sequence phi k to phi. Then we know by definition, there is a compact or bounded set k in Rn, such that the support of all phi k's lies in this compact set k. And we also know that for all multi-indices alpha, we have that the derivatives d alpha phi k converge in the supremum norm. Please keep in mind, this was just the explanation what the deconvergence here means. Okay, and now we just have to check if t of phi k is convergent to t of phi. In other words, we want that this term goes to zero when k goes to infinity. By using the linearity, we can rewrite that as t of phi k minus phi. Of course, we know this is again a test function with support at k, so we know there exists an m and an c such that this estimate holds. And there you see we have what we want because this term goes to zero when k goes to infinity. And please don't forget we have a finite sum here. So this is all we needed to show for the first part. Now let's go from the left hand side to the right hand side. Here I want to do a proof by contraposition. So we start with the negation of the right hand side. This means that we just have to exchange the quantifiers. So here we have there exists a compact set such that for all m and all c there exists a test function phi. And the negation of the implication is just that the support is still in k but the inequality goes the other way around. This means that we have a greater sign here. So this is our assumption and where we want to get to is that t is not continuous. Now we call this whole thing means there is a compact set, but then no matter which m and c we choose, we always find a corresponding phi. Therefore, let's go through all the natural numbers k for c and m and take the corresponding phi k. This means that we have t phi k greater than k times the sum where we have here the maximal order for the derivatives as k. Please don't forget the absolute value around a multi-index just means that you add up all the components. So no matter how you combine all the partial derivatives, the maximal order you get out is always k. Also important to note is that we have the zero multi-index as well in this sum, which means we have the supremum norm of phi k here. Now the key idea of the proof is that we define a new test function psi k by scaling the phi k's. And of course, the correct scaling factor is exactly 1 over the absolute value of t of phi k. Because we know it's increasing with k and it increases faster than the supremum norm of phi k. 
Therefore, by this definition, the psi k's go uniformly to the zero function when k tends to infinity. In fact, the whole argument works for every multi-index, which means we have the uniform convergence for every derivative. Combining this with the supports being all in k, we have indeed the deconvergence. However, now you might already see, the images under t don't converge to zero. To see this, just look at the absolute value of t of psi k, which is by the linearity just 1 over the absolute value of t of phi k times the absolute value of t of phi k, which is of course always 1. In other words, it does not converge to zero. Now this simply means the linear map t is not continuous. And that is what we wanted to show from the beginning, so our proof is finished. With this technical proposition out of the way, we can go to the definition of a regular distribution. For this, we first need the notion of a locally integrable function. Let's call the function f, and it can have values in r or in c. And we call it locally integrable if the function is integrable when we restrict it to any compact set. So you can put it in the way that the integral over a compact set k of the function f with the absolute value makes sense and is finite. When you know how to deal with Lebesgue integrals, it will make your life much easier here because you know you need a measurable function f and the integral should be finite. However, it's also possible to think of a normal Riemann integral here and do everything with the Riemann integral, but then of course we don't get out the full general result. Therefore, I would say knowing some measure theory and the Lebesgue integral is indeed helpful here in the theory of distributions. Now, for such locally integrable functions, we use a common notation, namely we write a curved L with 1 and log. And often we put in the domain, which is here Rn. Please note, of course, all integrable functions are also locally integrable. We just have more functions here. For example, if you consider the function f, which sends r to r, and x to x squared, then this function is not integrable because the integral over the whole domain r would be infinity. However, it's locally integrable because it's a continuous function, and when we integrate over a bounded set here, we don't have any problem, we get out a finite integral. Nevertheless, please note that we don't need the continuity for a locally integrable function. We have much more functions here than just the continuous ones. Now, the nice thing we want to do now with such a function is to define a distribution. For such a function f, I want to use the notation tf for the corresponding distribution. And it is defined for a test function phi, and you might already know this because we did it for continuous functions in the last video, by the integral fx phi x dx. This is a well-defined distribution because the integral is actually just an integral over a compact set, namely the support of phi. It's also linear and it fulfills our estimate from the beginning. This one we really should write down, so we have the absolute value of t f phi, we can pull in the absolute value into the integral, and we can also easily split it up. Now instead of Rn, we can just write the support of phi, simply because outside the function phi is zero, which has no contribution to the integral. Also we know we can estimate this one with the supremum norm of phi. Hence we have the integral of f in the absolute value times the supremum norm of phi. Of course, we can integrate here over any compact set k as long as it is a superset of the support of phi. Now, please remember what the estimate is we want to show. So I put it here in a box as a reminder. And there you see the integral here is the constant c here and the sum is just the sum where m is zero. So we just have the supremum norm of phi. In other words, we have indeed a distribution. So you see, this is similar to what we had in the last video, where we considered continuous functions. The distribution here is essentially given by a normal function f. 
And therefore, these distributions are just called regular distributions. To put this into a definition, you would say a distribution t is called regular if there is a locally integrable function f such that t is the same as tf. So the linear map t can actually be written as an integral in this sense. So you could say these are the distributions that behave like normal functions as we already know it, but we also know there are much more distributions than that. Indeed, the delta distribution is not regular and we can show this in the next video. Therefore, I hope I see you there and have a nice day. Bye.